Could you rain on my body? So since I've been sitting all day long, you know, so you don't mind if I stand up, right? Nope. So uh, basically, uh, we're going to talk about uh, healthy, meaningful living. But before we do that, as probably you all know, I am a you know, new Muslim, convert Muslim, revert Muslim, whatever is politically correct to say these days, I don't know. So I'm just trying to learn like everybody else. And so, whenever I do these sessions, I ask a question, which I've been asking for maybe the past 50 years. And so I start the session by asking this question to you all, okay? So basically, this is the entrance, because this is actually a workshop series of six, uh, six different modules, which we'll talk about a little bit later. And this is sort of the introduction to that whole series. So, a few ground rules. Intention. Everyone is here because we want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, there's no use, right? So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me and all of us that, you know, intention to please Allah, seeking beneficial knowledge. Full attention, remove distractions. Please phones off. It reminds me also. Out, off and out of sight. Out of sight, out of mind, right? Yeah. This is probably the greatest travail that we face in the 21st century, you know. Allah help us. Full attention, remove distractions, phones, digital gadgets, all out of sight. Keep a paper and pencil eraser if you have it, you don't have it, okay. Just try and remember things if possible. Uh, questions, comments, disagreements, I want to share something, that's all great, but we have a very short time, and so we need to, you know, we'll have sessions for that, proper, but if we stop every time, you know, we need to get into something like this, then it's going to probably prevent us from covering the matter that we need to cover, okay? So, when we do have questions or comments, then let's keep it right to the point, and so that we can cover the material that we need to cover, okay? And usually, the questions that we have, five minutes down the road comes the answer. And this is what I, as a teacher, I find this again and again. You know, people ask, teacher, it's just in this third line ahead of you, you know. So sometimes if we just wait in patience, sometimes usually the answer does come immediately. And so we don't need to stop. So be as brief as possible so that sufficient time can be given to the core course material without compromising, inshallah ta'ala. So session one. As I said, I have a question, and usually we have people write it down, but we'll just do it verbally here. Why am I here? What is the purpose of my life? So that's a question. I've been asking this question myself, and I'm asking people again and again. Yeah. So I'd like some feedback. What, what would you say? Why am I here in the world? What's my purpose of life? Yes. Supposed to, yeah. To worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Wonderful. We know it cerebrally, huh? Yeah. Wonderful. Any other opinion on that? I mean, whatever you think is your purpose. We have a purpose, right? So, what would that be? To know Allah. Huh? To know Allah. To know Allah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, whatever people have to say, that's what we'll say. Yes. To serve. To serve. To serve uh, can you elucidate? Serve humanity. Okay. 
I'm, I'm asking you. Uh, you have your own, you know, answers. You know. سنصل سنصل إلى هذا ولكن ماذا عند الناس فليخرجوا نعم okay so this is a I'll tell you an interesting story I hope it's interesting to you it's very interesting to me when I accepted Islam and then I came back here to the, to the states in probably 1972 so I went I'm originally from Cleveland Ohio so I went to visit my cousins and my uncles and my my grandmother was still alive at that time and to you know talk to them about Islam and show them you know and so so I met my cousin one of my cousins and they're brilliant you know they all were students of Harvard and MIT and you know just geniuses and so uh, my cousin John I said John you know what's your purpose of life I don't know And like, it wasn't a big deal also. I don't know, and so what? This is the answer that you'll get from most people on the planet today. What's the purpose? Come on, man. We're just trying to make a living, you know. I need to get through the day, or at least the month, you know. There's a purpose, you know. Now imagine, now, uh, you know, he was like, you know, top of the class in Harvard, you know. He was, a, he was a genius. He is. He's a wonderful person. He still, still hasn't accepted us long. Anyway, but look at this. As we're talking about in the khutbah today, right? Can you imagine, to get into Harvard, you know, it's not a joke, you know. You had to go through the best of the best, you know, that the West has to offer. And that's, you know. But going through that entire process, the end result is, why are you here in the world? I don't know. This is serious. Extremely serious, you know. So, the philosophers of the world who are not divinely, you know, guided, they couldn't answer this question. And they ended up saying, there's no purpose. There's, the purpose is there's no purpose. Forget about it. We heard, in the, we heard the verse say, you, We created this entire creation without purpose, for nothing, and you won't have to come back for, you know, for recompense, for accountability. Not possible. So actually what I usually do when we have longer sessions of people, write this down, and then we think about it. Write it down, whatever you have to say, and then we go through the session and we ask again. So we don't have that opportunity now. Okay, I have a concept which I call a paradigm inversion. You've probably heard of a paradigm shift. Paradigm shift, you know, you take this and you shift it here. Paradigm inversion is you <laughs> do this. So we have a lot of concepts, perceptions that we need to actually invert, not simply shift them around, you know. So this is something that we'll use from time to time in this session. So material, we have two basic material or paradigms that we have actually functional in the world if you boil if it all boils down to and it boils down to you have basically the material paradigm okay and if we want to graphically illustrate it it kind of looks like this what do you see look closer upside down tree what else upside down tree you got a building there upside down. You got <laughs> the whole thing is what? Then we have what we call the Urbudia paradigm. The paradigm, the concept that we are created to be slaves. We we are not we didn't come here on our own. Everything is based on obedience. Urbudia. We're coming to that, yeah. And that kind of looks like this. Now what do we see? It's right, it's upright. It's in place. Right? That's the purpose. I come up with my purpose, you come up with your purpose. My, I, think, I think, I think, I think, I think. Who am I? <laughs> you know, that, that, that concept, my two cents. It's not even worth 
a half a cent, you know, what I think, or what you think, or what anybody thinks. Particularly in subjects which we have no recourse to. Why we were created, we would have to ask the Creator, why did you create me? And he answered that question. And he says, I have not created the men and jinn except. And this word cannot be translated effectively, properly in the English language by another word. There's no word for it, ubudiyah. But I've tried to convey the meaning by saying, except for my continuous ubudiyah, which basically means worship and servitude. Now let's go back to this construct in Arabic. Illa li ya'budun. This is a verbal construct. Ya'bud. It's what we call in the Arabic language fi'l mudhari'a. Continuous tense. It's going on continually. So Allah subhanahu didn't create us, you know, to, to espouse a philosophy. He created us to be in a continuous particular situation. It's a state of being. To be in a state of being of submission. Continuously realizing we are the slave of our creator. Illa li abudun. And as I mentioned in the khutbah, so this is all related to what we said in the morning, in, in the afternoon. In the khutbah we talked about, you know, continuously being engaged in every action that we do according to the order of Allah in the way of his Rasul, so with the correct intention, right? So, as we said earlier in the khutbah, that man is constantly doing. I'm speaking, I'm hearing, I'm doing, I'm taking, I'm buying, I'm selling, I'm worshipping, I'm praying. I'm marrying, I'm divorcing, I'm having children, I'm spending, I'm building, I'm eating, I'm drinking, I'm sleeping. Whatever I'm doing, it needs to be in the context of ya'budun. And therefore, every action that we do can be an act of ibadah. And that's what we've been created for. Nothing else in this creation can do that. Only human beings and jinn. That's what gives us our position, our sharaf. If we do it. And if we don't, tumaradadnahu asfal safirin. We make him the lowest of the low. We have the ability to be, the potential to be the best of the best. We also have the propensity to be the worst of the worst. Which is basically mostly what we see in the world today. So, this ubudiyah is basically Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's obedience and servitude. But why? Because we love and revere our creator and sustainer. How many of us actually put in a petition that, oh Allah, I think I deserve to be created, so you should create me? Huh? Do any of us actually deserve this, this, this gift of life, existence? One of our brothers in South Africa, a new Muslim, he says, look, if you were only created for a moment just to open your eyes and, and just, you know, absorb and, and, and stare in awe at the creation for a moment, that would be much more than anyone deserves. But we have a whole life that Allah has given us and everything that we have in it. Allahu Akbar. So therefore, we, we submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we love him and we... we, we we, we're in awe, we're in gratitude, you know, for his favors. At the same time, we are also in wajal. We're also in fear that if we, we, uh, we, we, we have shortcomings in our obedience, in our submission, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take us to task. Rightly so. He's fully capable of doing so. May Allah help us. So, ubudiyah is that for this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us to be continuously, and to be continuously engaged in his obedience, it needs, we have to have continuous attention to our Creator. Well, that's the first thing that we have to do. Now, to understand Urbudiya, there are some very simple terms that we have to understand. Now, those who understand the Arabic language is pretty clear to them, but for many of us who Arabic is not our language, sometimes we don't really understand these terms. So we need to understand exactly what these mean. Islam, what does it mean? Submission. Alhamdulillah. Many people don't know that. Muslims. <laughs> In Pakistan, when I do this, most of the people don't get this right. Islam, it means salam. It means salama. Peace. It doesn't mean peace. Peace comes from Islam. <laughs> but 
The meaning of Islam, the word, doesn't mean peace. That's salama, salam. Islam is submission. Aslama yuslimu, Islam. And if we understand what Islam means, then we should probably understand what Muslim means. What is a Muslim? The one who does it. <laughs> the one who submits. Ism fail. Active participle. He's the one who submits. So if we're actively submitting, we're actually practically, tactically a Muslim. And if we're not submitting, who knows what we are, you know. We call ourselves whatever we want to call ourselves, but in fact, being a Muslim really means to submit. Now, don't get me wrong, you know, there's levels of submission. Uh, he's not offering salah, he's, he's a kafir, you know, take him out. No, 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 it doesn't work like that. Because submission has states. Every submission is not like others. We have, you know, people like us, and then we have Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There's a big shatana bin al-manzilatayn. Huh? So there's a lot of difference between that. Just like we have life. Somebody's alive. For example, you have somebody in the ICU, you know, on the ventilator. His heart is pumping, you know, but he's unable to do anything. He can't eat, he can't sleep, he can't drink, he can't work, he can't feed any, he can't look after his family, he can't play any role in society. Basically useless, right? So let's just, you know, bury the guy, right? Can we do that? Can we do that? Useless. Come on, this is, you know. We have an, and if we, do, if we do bury him like that, just chuck him out, which people are doing now, right? So what does that make us? Murders. Because that person is alive. The quality of life, albeit lowest that it could possibly be, but nevertheless, he's alive. As long as he's alive, he is alive and his life is valuable and sacred. We have another person who's fully capable of doing whatever, you know, he intends to do. He's got full power, he's got resources, he's got, you know, vibrant health, and he's, you know, he's a CEO of his company, he's, you know, he's active in the community. So he's alive and he's alive. So there's a big difference, but they're both alive. So they, are, they both have s sacredness within that context of being alive. So similarly, a Muslim who even just says, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, now he is a Muslim and he has at least that level of, minimum level of submission. And that goes on going higher and higher to the, our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the benchmark in each and every action. Okay, last thing, deen. What is deen? We have life, religion. Hmm? So deen actually is that total system of submission. Simple. How do we do it? You know, everything that we have to do, it's all part of the deen. It's not like, this is dunya, this is deen. Everything can be part of deen. Provided we have those conditions. Otherwise, even things that seem to be deen, they become dunya. Right? Okay, so then it has a huge scope, all activities of life, all roles of life. But the trick is balance. Balance. Allahu Akbar. You know, usually we find people that, who are star performers, like, you know, for example, people like us, you know, we give presentations, you know, we do this, we do that. But if somebody asks us, okay, how are they at home? What kind of a husband is he? What kind of a... Neighbor is he? Have we done business transactions with him? Does he fulfill his promises and commitments? You know? So sometimes, and generally what happens is, if we shine in a particular role in life, we tend to be negligent in other roles of life. This is not acceptable. We have to have a bare, at least a minimum level of acceptability in all our roles in life. We are husbands, Wives, fathers, mothers, daughters, sons, neighbors, relatives, employees, employers, whatever portfolio as a human being we have. In all of those roles, we need to see the commandments of Allah. We need to see the way of Rasulullah and learn, by the way, 
what is the what is the minimum level of acceptable performance that we need to have in each and every one of those roles so this is a very tricky thing and we have as the benchmark again muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam laqad kana lakum fi rasulillahi uswatun hasana and it's interesting in the ayat it says we have in the in the example of rasul is the best of example but it doesn't say in what huh Liman Khan, not for everybody, but he was the best example for what? In what? As what? Ha. Hudifa liya'um. What is not mentioned? Because in everything, everything that he did. Absolutely. And look at the portfolio. He was everything. He was father, he was husband. Husband of how many wives? At some point, nine wives. How many married here? Everybody? How many of us can, you know, send a, a, a performer to our wives? How do you rate your husband from 1 to 10? How many of you are pretty sure that your wife is going to give you a 10? <laughs> huh? Not many of us. I, I probably, I, I know I can't, but... Now, suppose if we sent that questionnaire to nine wives of Rasulullah, what would they answer? The 10... Put another two, three zeros on it. You know, it sounds more like, you know, subhanAllah. So we have a problem, you know, being good husbands for, and he was a perfect husband for nine. And he was running the state. And he was the chief of the, of the, of the military. And he was a prophet. He was a rasul. He was a neighbor. He was a, everything. And the balance, subhanAllah. No taqseer, no ifrat, no tafrit. So we have to study sirah, you know, we have to study the life of our Prophet ﷺ. Study the life of his wives, of his daughters, his companions, you know. Allahu Akbar, you know, and, and, and that's who we should emulate. That's our heroes, you know. Balance. So balancing those roles and getting it all right, may Allah give me tawfiq and all of us, inshallah. Say ameen. Okay, so deen basically is an operational application of this urbudiyah in a practical sense all the time. Okay? So then usually we go back and we say, okay, let's go back and think about, you know, that statement that we made, what's my purpose of life? And I think probably it's become very clear. And for most of us, I think it was pretty clear in the beginning. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Now we're going to have a little exercise. Okay? Because I know everybody, you know, listening and somebody talking, you know, the guy's talking, he's fine. Everybody's listening. And, but we're going to actually do an exercise now. And this exercise is a very important exercise. And it's based on a parable that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives in the Holy Quran. And that parable is, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, alam tara kayfa dharab Allahum mathalan kalimatan tayyiba ka shajaratin tayyiba asluha thabitun wa farwa fi s-sama tu'ti ukulaha kulla heenin bi'ithni rabbiha wa yadribu Allahu al-amthala lil-nas la'allahum yatadhakkaroon. Did you not see how Allah Jalla Jalaluhu has set forth a parable? A goodly saying as a goodly tree. It's very difficult to translate this, but shajra kalima tayba, a beautiful, a goodly, a wonderful word or phrase like a wonderful and very wholesome and magnificent tree. And that is actually the example of a mu'min. He's like that tree. Its root is set firm, branches high in the sky, bringing forth its fruit at all times by the leave of its Lord. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends forth parables for the people that perchance they may reflect. Okay. Surah Ibrahim, verse 24. There's another verse as well that we want to look at in conjunction to this verse, and that is, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم لقد من الله على المؤمنين إذ بعث فيهم رسولا من أنفسهم يتلو عليهم آياته ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة وإن كانوا من قبل لفي ضلال مبين. Indeed, Allah جل جلاله did confer a great favor upon the believers when he sent among them a messenger from among themselves 
reciting. This was his portfolio. The portfolio of Rasulullah reciting to them the revelations of Allah. Yet Lu alayhim ayatihi. So what what recitation is this? For barakah? For ta'abud only? Or does it have some more collective purpose? Actually, this was the recitation of Dawat. Yet lu alayhim ayatihi. He recites to them the verses of Quran. Wadakir bil Quran man yakhafu wa'id. One atlu al Quran. So this was actually to recite the doubt of our souls was the, that was the Quran itself. Hada bayanun lin nas. Wallahi yad'u ila dar is salam. So reciting them and inviting the creation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the revelations, through the ayats of the Holy Quran. And purifying them. We use zakihim, tazkiyah. Purifying them. Man by left to his own machinations, he's animalistic and he's angelic at the same time. The animalistic characteristics tend to overpower the human being. His shahwa, his desires, his passions, they overpower him. Unless a process is put in place to purify, to remove those animalistic and satanic, you know, types of behaviors and, 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 and qualities and replace them with angelic qualities. Tazkiyah. So that is the second, you know, activity of Rasul Ali Salatu Salam. Tazkiyah. And teaching them the scripture and wisdom. Teaching them the scripture and wisdom. Teaching them the ulum al deen from the Holy Quran and from the Sunnah of Rasul Ali Salatu Salam. The fiqh al deen Okay? Dawat, basically. Terbiyah, Tazkiyah, and Ta'aleem. Now, if we wanted to make a sort of a diagram, a graphic example of that whole concept, it might look... Uh, and although before that they were in manifest error. Now, we who have accepted Islam, probably our sisters and others who have become Muslims, we re this really, you know, relates, you know, we can really relate. Before that, in Vladim Mubin, you know, out on Sunset Boulevard, in Vladim Mubin, yeah, it was really clear, you know, being totally lost. And similarly with the, with the Arabs before the Ba'that of Rasul wasalam, And similarly were any human beings until they adopted and embraced the teachings of our, of our deen. SubhanAllah. Okay, now, if we wanted to graphically describe, the, it might, we could have an example something like this. Okay? I'm not going to talk too much about this because that's what the exercise is. So the exercise is, for all of you, we're going to make little groups right now. And what we're going to do is we're going to discuss this example. Okay? And how we're going to discuss this example, I'll, I'll give you the picture back. What I'd like you to do, at least we're going to have, like, maybe two groups of the ladies, okay? And then men can make th three, four groups, okay? Right? So each group, I want you to write down, you know, the exercise that we're going to do. And here, here's what it is. Okay, just can somebody write that down? You've, you've got high tech, mashallah. Just take it down in your, in your, or you can just take a picture of that. Just take a picture of this. I'm going to put all the, you know, all the questions, and then take a picture of that, and then you're going to have your discussion group, which will take about five, ten minutes. Okay. So what do we see here? What's the basic overall concept that's going on in that picture, right? Okay, secondly, identify the parts of the tree. That shouldn't be too difficult, but it's important. Okay, what are the different parts of the tree? Number three, how did this tree bear fruit? What was the process from the beginning to the end? It just happened or there was a process involved? Okay, what were the elements and factors involved? Okay, and all of this you're going to take from the diagram itself, okay? Is this clear? Ladies, is that clear? Okay. Okay, so let's make, let's form our groups. So we have a very short time. So we're going to give you up to seven minutes. We're going to have a little discussion, okay? So perhaps two groups. We want to have one group. What do you want to do? One group? Okay, however you want to do it. Whatever you feel comfortable. Okay, men also. 
Maybe each each row can have your little discussion. Yeah, this row is pretty is a bit. Maybe this row in conjunction with this row. Okay. Bismillah. Okay. So let's go back to the tree. Yeah. Okay. You got that. So here's the tree. What do we see here? What are the parts of the tree? And how did the tree bear fruit? That's the most important thing. What was the process? Observe whatever is being written here and kind of observe that, think about it, and then come up with your conclusion. From every group, we're going to have one representative giving your findings. Okay? Well, we usually do that, but actually this was kind of off the cuff. Otherwise, we have a manual and we have all of that stuff, you know, for everybody, but this will be sufficient. Can you read the ayats? Also pay particular attention to this whole thing, you know. Yeah, color, we, you know, which one? Green and the yellow, you know, like, okay, so from some, what's this, underneath sign is what? Nothing? Nuffle. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, nothing like Salat, Nawafil, Adkar, Som, Nuffle. So very much is like uh, one of the pillar of the... Ibadat. Yeah. Yeah, ibadat and Mutanawiyah. Any min min baadiha? We love a غير متناهية. لكن على سبيل أمثلة. لكن أخلاق يعني يتدخل في معاملة. لكن المعاملة يعني معاملات المالية المعاملات اللي نعم. عموما يعني ولذلك التطفيه فيرنس إيكوالتي كميتمنت 
honesty. They get it all right, huh? I like your session very much. The first thing is that uh, mashallah. I've been thinking about it for a couple of hours. No, because we have to. It's our deen. Wow. That's why you know I was just going to say. Alam Alam Mustan. That's not all of them. It's just some examples of the fruits are unlimited, you know. But that's just some examples. Yeah. Marhaban. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll talk about that. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that. Yeah. No, we're going to talk. Let's see what you come up with. Have we come to conclusions? Okay, ladies, how are you doing? You're, you're, you're okay now? You've done it? You ready to present? You're done? Okay. The ladies, they always they outshine. They always do that. Okay, we need one presenter from the ladies. We need one presenter from the men. Who wants to go first? Ladies first? Okay. Who wants to uh, explain?
It it's it'd be disastrous, you know. Absolutely. Good. Those, those fruits, when they are harvested, they will mm -hmm. be really, really f uh, sweet and... Okay, now, but the main thing is, how did we get the fruits? What was the process? This is the, actually the, the, the main thing that we want to identify. We get it from Because we want the, the fruits. Yeah, <laughs> we get it from the very beginning. Okay. If we, if we give, if we, if we get... Okay, let me ask you, let me, let me ask you a question. You see, fikr, marifa, iman, does it go bottom up or top down? No, we go oh, bottom up. Are these just like we say in Arabic, mutlaq jama? You know, they're just, we had to put them all there, so we just put them like that. Or is there a, an intended sequence there? Fikr, marifa, iman, yaqeen, ikhlas, nasiya, sharia. Is there a sequence here or what? How does a tree grow? Does it just pop up or it's sequential? Uh -huh. hey, would you like to add something else? No, everything you're saying is wonderful, you know, it's, it's great. Anything else? No? Jazakum al-khair, wonderful. Okay, men, what have you got? Okay. Oh, yeah? Got anything more to say? Yeah. Okay, but did you ponder over all the rest of what's going on there? The process? It's just a ritual. Okay. All right. Okay. So, Jazakum Allah Khair. That's all wonderful. Now, number one, a tree, as any other plant, it goes from top, it goes from bottom to top. Okay? And it starts with the roots, right? Now, it's very interesting that trees, plants, any plant, it has three macronutrients that it needs to survive. You know those? You don't know those. You study biology? Huh? Phosphorus, potassium, nitrogen. Three macronutrients. 
Interestingly, human beings also have three macronutrients, which are? Exactly. At least that we know. We don't know what plant, but we, we, we need, yeah. Huh? Carbs, protein, and fat. This tree also has three macronutrients. What are they? Tawat, talim, tarbiya. Now, we need to know what is talim, dawat, and tarbiya, because we think it's all the same thing. It's not at all. They each have their own specific, they're each macronutrient. Protein is not fat. Fat is not carbohydrate. They all have their own, you know, role. Dawat. Dawat is invitation. Every Nebi started with what? He started with tarbiya, talim, dawat. Why? Because people are in ghafla. You know, I'm walking around, you know, I want the American dream. Nay, there's death, moat, qabr is right in front of you. Wake up. You have to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tomorrow. Oh, look around you. Look at the heavens and the earth. Look at all this system. Allah has given you everything. No accountability. Wake up. Dawat. Dawat ilallah. So dawat is invitation to Allah. Invitation to the actions that are pleasing to Allah. Invitation to the next world as opposed to this world. That's dawat. Tazkiya. Tazkiya is what we mentioned. Is removing those, those, those evil characteristics of man and replacing them with beautiful characteristics. We say in Arabic, At-takhliya qabla at-tahliya. You know? If a young lady is, you know, this is her, her wedding night, first, you know, she gets totally clean and then she puts on her, you know, all of her makeup and her clothing and all that. Suppose, you know, after going to the gym for 10 12 hours, you know, work out, you know, cleaning up the house and then put all that stuff on, is it going to work? Not at all. So, we have to be cleansed of these, you know, animalistic and, you know, undesirable traits and replace them with desirable and beloved traits to Allah Taala. This is called tarbiyah, tazkiyah. And we need that daily. And ta'aleem is learning how to do the things, the how. The how. Salat, how do we do it? Muamala, how do we do it? Akhlaq, what is desired? You know, learning the information necessary to implement that. But unless we're inspired through dawat, and unless we are purified through tazkiya, the ta'alim, and this is what the sister is saying, we're learning the Quran, but there's no ta, there's no dawat, there's no tarbiya. You know? Our teachers, we had teachers, you know, that if we didn't come to class in haram, in Makkah, one of my teachers in Haram, if I, for whatever reason, I didn't show up in the class, he would walk for two kilometers up to my house and up to the fourth floor. What happened? You know? And he wasn't getting paid for that, by the way. You know? That, so that, so we learn from that, you know? So, Ta'alim is going to be effective when there is Dawud behind it, there's Terbiya behind it. When the, when the you know, when the hearts and the minds are open and receptive and want it, you know? We're not there because we have to, we're there because we want to, you know? So, when this dawah takes place, the first thing that happens is what? Mot, qabr, hisab, in front of Allah you'll have to stand. Oh, what happens? We start thinking about it, fikr. We were thinking, we are thinking about our job, our you know, our bank account. So, the first thing that happens is fikr, tanabbu. And if we continue that process of fikr, which we have a, we have a exercise for that another time, we don't have time for that, but it's a very interesting exercise and we'll actually send you out to do tafakkur. <laughs> and this is something we should be doing all the time. Allah SWT is telling us, إِنَّ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ لَآيَاتٍ لِكَوْمٍ in all the creation of the heavens and the earth, the changing of the day and the night, and all the things around you, look all around you, think about it, reflect. So what happens is, if we keep on reflecting, it brings about some awareness, some understanding of our Creator. That exercise alone. And if we continue that process, this continues. So this does a tree take nutrient, you know, like once a year? Or every week? Or every moment? Continuously. 
So similarly, we need continuously. That's why our programs are not working. Either we're focused on this and, we, and we're ignorant here, or there's no motivation here. We need all three of those macronutrients working at once. Then we, get, we start getting a growth. Okay? Thicker develops, marifa develops. Then that marifa turns into iman. You don't get iman just like that. Call it These Bedouins came, Ya Rasulullah, we believe. Allah says they don't believe. They just entered into the blessings. They said the kalima and they're in. But once they join the club and join the exercises, join the activities, join, you know, the amal, then iman will enter into their hearts. The process. There's a process involved here. You see? So this iman builds and then it becomes yaqeen, certainty. We're certain about it. And then your ikhlas comes. You don't get ikhlas, as our brother said, that comes late. One of my mashayikh, my main sheikh of Medina Manora, he's, he used to say, I asked him one, I said, sheikh, how do we get ikhlas? He said, well, you better ask somebody who has it. He was serious. Hey, can any of us say, I'm, I've, I've done this only for the sake of Allah? Can we say that? Are we so certain that no, you know, sort of, you know, other intention might have just creeped in somehow or another? It's very difficult. Huh? It's very, very difficult. It is like the last maqam, you know? So it's very difficult. So without this process, it's impossible, absolutely. And it is a branch of iman. So when this iman is building through this continuous process, then what happens is, ultimately, may Allah give me and all of us ikhlas. And then when we're mukhlis for Allah, then we can be mukhlis for His creation. People say it's all about service, it's about serving humanity. Yeah, okay. So why are you serving humanity, by the way? Well, because, because it's Allah's creation. That's why you're serving humanity. Yeah. It's Allah's creation. So by serving His creation with the belief that I'm pleasing Allah because it's His creation, so it makes sense. You know? Otherwise, it's not going to be sustainable. You know, until it gets, you know, difficult. If it's difficult, easy, whatever, we're going to do it because that is, Allah loves that, you know. Khairun nas may yen and nas. The best of the people are those who benefit the people, as our sister was saying. Service, it's, a, it's amazing, you know. SubhanAllah, may Allah give me and all of us tawfiq. And then, look, I put sharia up here. Why? People say, come on, when I came to Pakistan in 1985, so... Some of our colleagues, you know, they were shouting, look, we have to implement the Sharia. I said, yeah, absolutely. That's <laughs> no question, but on who are you just, who do you want to implement that on? Nobody's ready to, to do it. I have a challenge for humanity. I'm saying that legislature has never changed human behavior in the, in the history of human existence. Never. A law doesn't change people's behavior. It cannot. A law can protect a society that wants to act upon that behavior. Then it makes sense. In Mecca, there was no legislature. Why? Because there was, there was no environment of obedience. There was no environment. People were not, people were not even ready to submit to the Tawheed over there. Sharia all came in Medina after this process went on for 12, 15, 20 years. Then Sharia comes. To prove my point, we have a thing in the United States that's called the Prohibition. Anybody know about that? That era in the United States history is called the Roaring Twenties. Have you ever heard that expression? The roar what are the Roaring Twenties? Roaring with machine gun fire in all of these major cities of the, of the country. Why? Legislature. And it was a good legislature. They actually prohibited alcohol. They came to their senses. You know, this is ruining our society. We need to actually stop this. How did it work? Total failure. Total, it's just like we said today. <laughs> it was a good idea, but the process was faulty. And the result was a total backfire. It was probably one of the bloodiest eras you know, of, of, of American history. On the other hand, we also had a prohibition of Medina Manora. Anybody know about that? Quite a different outcome. Who had it in his hand, he threw it. Who had it in his mouth, he spit it. Who had it in his, you know, 
in his house, he threw it in the, in the streets, and the streets of Medina were running with wine. It was. This is, this is in our history. To the extent that there was a caravan coming from Syria. Wine. Totally wine, because that's where they used to get it. Yeah? So some Sahabi came out and met that caravan and said, you don't know, wine has been for, forbidden. So that caravan, the fellow, the, the Ras Sahib al-Mal, you know, the fellow, who, his, his business, he took out his dagger and just tuck, 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 tuck. Well, you don't You need to go to the Mufti and say, hey, Mufti, you know, like, uh, this is difficult. I mean, how, what's the hell for this, you know? Is there some shady compliant way we can, you know, something? No thought of it, you know? Not saying that we don't try and find solutions, easy solutions. Yes. But that wasn't his mindset. His mindset was obedience. I just want to prohibit it. I don't want anything to do with it. How did that happen? The process. The process was put, Dawah, Tarbiya, Talim, going on and on and on. And this took place, you know, years later. Shuhada of Uhud, many of them were Shuhada with wine in their stomachs. Even to, that, even to that point in time, the prohibition of wine had not come. They weren't ready for it. So we want to, you know, all this stuff should happen, and we don't go through this process. This is fool's play. Pipe dreams, you know, it's never going to happen. And therefore, you know, well, we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, so if this process continues, then what happens? And then Sharia, and then I say Sunnat. Because Sharia, we mean, what we mean by this, by utilizing the term here, we mean the minimum standards of acceptability. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us to give weight and measure accordingly, right? If I buy one kilo of tomatoes, it needs to be 1,000 grams, right? Sunnah of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is zinhu wa arjia. And he give him his due and something extra. How many people do that today? We see how we twist, you know, the quarter and dime out of somebody else. But the sunnah of our Prophet said, give him some extra. So, in other words, meeting the standard requirements, the minimum basic requirements of sharia, but going above and beyond that and following the sunnah of our Prophet, which is far above and beyond. Okay? So if we continue this process, then what happens is that this tree, it blooms into all these various beautiful branches. Hey, what's the, by the way, what's the first branch that in most trees that you see? Are the, fir- the branches, the first branches, these ones or this one? Top one. And that's how it was. First thing that actually was fard on us was what? Salat. Why? Huh? As a matter of fact, Probably you've all heard this, heard this hadith, Buni al-Islam ala khams. Everybody know that hadith? Islam is based and founded on five pillars. What are they? Shahada, Kalima, Salat, Som, Hajj, Zakat, right? Where's Mu'amalat? Where's Mu'asharat? Akhlaq, Adab, Halal, Haram, Sharia, Mafish. Mushkila. Huh? Eh? Huh? So what's the deal? Huh? Huh? Now, Buni al Islam. Nabi al Islam said, Buni al Islam ala khams. Pesh mana. Wain bakit al Islam. Where's the rest of the stuff? Yeah? Absolutely. Okay. Okay, so the significant... Right. But what's the significance of mentioning those five particularly? There is a... So, did Nabi Sallam said Islam is five things or he said it's based on five things? Islam is, is five things or Islam is Built on five things. Built on. For example, I say this hall is built on ten pillars. Okay? So what do I do? 
huh, this with 10 pillars, okay. Nabi Sosa says five pillars, okay, I'm building 10 pillars. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to call everybody to the presentation tonight, and all there is is 10 pillars. There's no roof, there's no projector, there's no curses, there's no, huh? People say, hey, what's wrong with this guy, you know? No, no, you know, I, the pillars are there. Pillars, that's all you need. On the other hand, suppose, suppose I say, look, you know, pillars, what's the use? I, we, you don't even see any pillars here, right? So why waste the time and money and effort? Why don't we just throw up the walls and the, and the roof and everything, you know? And let's save the money and the time and, you know, then we call everybody to the presentation and it was a great presentation. Allahu Akbar! And the whole thing caves in. Everybody gets, you know, everybody's killed on the first night. And this is what's happening to us. We don't understand the difference between a complete structure and the foundation of the structure. If you just have a foundation without the rest of the structure, you don't have a whole structure. You have only the foundation. However, if you want to have a structure without a foundation, what are you going to have? A disaster. And that's what we're having all over the world in the name of Islam also. Let's do this. No, 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 no. You know, people are shouting and slogans. And they have no foundation, no process in place, no foundation. And that foundation is what? Ibadat. That's why Islam is based on the foundation of Ibadat. Because what is our object of life? What's going to train us to be slaves? Mu'amalat, akhlaq, marsh, Ibadat. So if I learn to become a slave in Salat, Allahu Akbar, every part of me is now a slave. So, my desires, my passions, I'm able to control them. I'm a slave of Allah. My money, it's not mine, belongs to Allah. What he tells me to do, I'll do it. Hajj, Umrah, Zikr, Tarawah. These are all ibadat that create within us the mind and heart set of being a slave. Then when we're told, this is the mu'amala to do, this is the mu'ashara to do, this is the akhlaq to do, this is the behavior to do, do this, don't see this, don't talk this. Sami'ana wa ta'ana. Without this, impossible. And that's what we see all over the world. People say, oh, that's salat, tea. okay, fine, but it's, it's really about how we interact. But how we interact is dependent upon the quality of these ibadats. So all, the, and that's why salat imad deen and the most complete form of ibadah is salat. And that's why it's the first pillar. It's the first thing we're going to be asked about on the day of Qiyamah. It's the most important foundation that we have after Iman. And we give it very little importance. And even if we do it, how do we do it? So we need to practice on that. But, and we're going to talk about that in the Sunday. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِمُونَ May Allah give us khushu in, in our salat. Okay, so is this clear? So this is, a, you know, it is kind of a, an example for all of our endeavors. So just, we understand. So. What I'd like to ask from you all now, what are our main takeaways that we got from this example now? What are the main lessons or the main takeaways that we can now go back home with? Hmm? There's a process. Of? Dawat, Tarbiyah, Talim. So now we're all going home. How in our homes also we're going to initiate some type of Dawat, some type of Tarbiyah and Talim in our homes, in masjid, in our homes. We can do this in our places of work. Yes? Sure. Talk about Jannah first. Then ta <laughs> yeah, that's very true. Well, you know, everybody is different, right? Some children would respond better to this. Some would respond. And you as the mother, you know them better than anybody. So you have to just kind of, you know, work with them. And then you'll see what they react to, what they respond to in a more positive way. But there should be a mix, you know. Not too much hope and not too much fear, you know. Don't. 
put everybody into despair and don't put him into, un you know, it's no problem, you know, we're Muslims, we're going to go to Jannah, okay, don't worry about it. Or forget about it, you're going to Jahannam, you know, it's a closed case. No. Al-Iman bain al khawfi wa raja. Iman, belief is between hope and fear. So, you, you see the islub of Quran. Quran never mentions Jannah except right after Jahannam. Never mentions Jahannam except right after it, Jannah and Wahakad. You know? Targheeb and Tarheeb, Targheeb and Tarheeb. And through that motivation. Yeah? Wallahu alam. But we can come up with things and we, you know, share with one another. As we said in the khutbah, we need to help. So we help one another. Come up with something. You try something. Okay, this worked for me. Try this, sister. This, you know, I, we can have platforms on that. We can have, you know, groups and, and, and stuff like that and discuss and share. But we need to have something. Something about Dawud, something about Tarbiyah, something about Talim. For that, we can discuss that and come up with some, some initiatives that we can initiate in our places of, you know, our homes and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, basically. Tazkiyah. Okay. For example, some of the most important, you know, what we say, you know, the very, you know, meaty, Items, for example, the use of the tongue. Some of the most foul things that happen or relationships between human beings are what produce, are produced by their tongue. So if we learn how to control that tongue, you know, the Arab, they have a saying, man sakata salima. One of our pious ancestors, he said, I was never sorry about keeping quiet, but I was sorry a lot for what I had to say, <laughs> for things that I had to say. So. We, we learn to control our tongues. We can talk about that, you know? You know? Huh? That you will? Never say something that you'll have to apologize for. You're beautiful, yeah. One of our ancestors, pious ancestors, he used to write down everything he used to say during the day. And then in, before sleeping, he would go over it and say, oh, why did I say that? I didn't have to say that, you know. How much time I wasted, you know. Huh? Yeah, and, we're, and actually we're going to be held account for all that we have to say. Huh? Allahu Akbar, you know. The, 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 the cultivation of, your, the, of the fruit of your tongues, that's the fuel of Jahannam, you know. So, so things like this, you know. Hasad, you know. Uh, arrogance. You're arrogant. Why are you arrogant? You know, you were nothing yesterday. Tomorrow you're going to be a jifa in the grave. So, you know, what's going to be arrogant? Whatever you have, it's from Allah. He gave you. You have nothing to do with it. You know, so things like this. And we can, you know, there's a lot of resources now that we have. We have a lot of books and booklets and, you know, there's resources. We have plenty. But, you know, we've got like an information overload. So we're just going to have to kind of select good information and try and apply it. You know. You're all very, you know, intelligent and highly educated and very creative people, you, you come up with great things. And But let's start. Let's start doing things and, you know, what works, keep it. You know, and what doesn't, try something else. But within the context of our teachings. Okay, is this clear? Okay, we've gone over the time limit, so I don't know how much time you all can tolerate me. <laughs> but I enjoy your all company. I'm just having a great time because... So as long as you want to go, I can... Uh, but what... Huh? Bil Arabiya? Naam. Fadla. Naam. La. Bel, bel huwa yani a'tabar nafsuhu yad'u nafsuhu awalan. ولو ينتظر حتى هو يعني صاف من كل هذه الراذل فلن يقوم أبدا وإلا فإنسان يعني ها فأنت تبدأ يعني و... ولكن يوجه هذه السيئات ويحاول إزالتها Mm. 
طيب اوكي سو وي جست سو وي ديد ذات اكسرسايز الحمد لله سو ذس از ذا بيربس سو ذا ذا تو ويند اب سمري ذا بيربس اوف اور لايف از عبوديه ذا ابجكت اوف اور لايف از رضا الله الجنه مي الله جرانت اس اول يو نو اوكي يا ايتها النفس المطمئنه ارجعي الى ربك راضيه مرضيه ها فادخلي في عبادي انتر امونج ماي هو سليفز ادخلي في عبادي وادخلي جنتي اللهم اجعلنا منهم اللهم اجعلنا منهم اوكي okay? I just I wanted to so yeah so we've got a lot of stuff here so but I want to just go to this this point here holistic health we talked about a healthy meaningful life healthy meaningful living so i have a whole series on that and adam is telling me that we've time is up right <laughs> so you know so uh, let me just show you this uh, this portion and then we're going to call it a night okay so holistic health now this is something because actually as a as a new muslim and i have an upbringing of healthy natural my mother's a dietitian and nutritionist and organic gardener and so we grew up like that alhamdulillah ma bi ni'mati rabbika fa hadith i'm 69 years old and i'm still i have no medical issues that i know of i still you know i can out swim and surf all my kids even you know and it's and it's that there's nothing special about that i just try and take care of myself a little bit and not that much so if we but what i found is after accepting islam and traveling around the muslim world the muslims are a mess our diet our our lifestyle our sleep habits you know it's 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 horrific so i thought we really need to do something about that and so i came up with this workshop syllabus and so what we do is we look at the various six dimensions of holistic health spiritual intellectual we have to continue this dementia you know dementia is you know we didn't have all that people don't use their brains anymore it's a muscle if you don't use it you lose it and so we have a whole we have a whole module on developing you know our intellectual health our physical health we look in at diet we look at exercise we look at sleep patterns from quran from sunnah from the aqwal of our ulama and then looking at what specialists you know they have to say in all these areas emotional it's a huge issue now everybody's you know stressed out tension stress depression you know schizophrenia i don't know what all you know all these disorders so there's some simple things that we can do to you know suppress a lot of that or control a lot of that or eliminate and avoid a lot of this travail social health allah akbar our relationships you know so we we know what's going on husband and wife children parents neighbors relations you know neighbors so we look into that in detail and then environment and was i would love to hear that you were talking about environment because that's something that we if all us want to make us khulafa of the earth that means we're responsible for the earth also right and we are acting like the least responsible people of on the earth you know we're terrible i mean here in america we're doing a little better but in muslim countries where muslim i don't say islamic i said muslim country where we have majority of muslims it's horrendous yeah the famous tree huh the famous tree that brings fruit is energy from above right huh is energy energy from above yeah from the sun we need the energy from allah subhanahu absolutely <laughs> absolutely absolutely okay so th- what we have is we have a program where we spend a day sometimes two sometimes three and we have sort of retreats we have workshops so maybe inshallah in the future we can uh, do these modules inshallah but it requires a little bit more time and not we don't start at 8 in the night we start at 8 in the morning okay so inshallah hopefully we'll we'll do those sessions and jazakum allah khair it was very wonderful to have you all and barakallahu fikum and hopefully we'll meet again and again yani fi dunya wal akhirah inshallah barakallahu fikum subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta wa nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaykum astaghfiruka